Tuesday, June 11th. Uh, thank you to people, folks watching at home, to I believe our petitioners who are here, and to um, Rich for joining us this evening. Uh, we will um, be recorded on WinCam, so just making everyone aware of that, and we will open with, I guess, a roll call vote, but we're all here, so I don't know how we do this. Uh, Diab Jarius is. Diab Jarius is here. And Brian Vernalius <coughs> here. Carrie Layton is present. Joe Cortez is here. Okay, great. So with quorum, uh, we can open. So um, anyone have updates? I think the only update that I would have would probably fit better later. So um, I would just say the town day um, tent went really oh, yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, town day. How'd town day go? It went really well. Um, I was only there for about two and a half hour time period, sort of in the afternoon. Um, we, we had a fair number of people actually stop by, um, got some good comments, some good questions, um, which I um, kept track of and forwarded on to the chair of the questions. Um, and we had a lot of little kids stop by because I brought some candy later on in the day. So I got more people to come than uh, <clears throat> maybe might have come otherwise. Um, but I thought it was successful. I, John, you were there in the morning? No, I wasn't. Yeah, we had good coverage. <coughs> Taylor set up in the morning, and then I covered until you got there. And Nick okay. was there for a while in the interim, so we had good planning board representation, and we got to interact with lots of folks. It was good. It went very well. It was a beautiful day. And actually, as a follow-up to that, I happen to know that some people who took a leaflet that we had about the downtown traffic study mm. were then on a separate chat all talking about that from the leaflet and all going oh. to the meeting that was earlier tonight oh, based great. on getting the leaflet from us so. outreach works i love it oh. we also got a number of people to sign up for taylor's newsletter so hopefully that was a good a good outreach good call um that was the only update i had okay great and anyone else anything else you want to update us on okay so we can we're one minute ahead of moving to approval of the minutes but i think that's probably fine does anybody have any comments edits corrections or concerns about the meeting minutes from may 21st no okay anyone like to move to approve the minutes so moved second Okay, great. And um, I think we just vote with them yeah. raising of hands. All in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. Aye. Yes. Well, to make it easier on our recording secretary, <laughs> we should probably give our say how we yes. voted. So our I, so uh, what's helpful? Name ourselves or unanimous vote or? I believe I have. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. okay. We, oh. should, we should formally welcome, for the benefit of WinCam, our new recording secretary, Cheryl Dennis, and thank, thank her for being much. here. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, I just noticed um, in the minutes that reminded me, do we have any update on our hiring of our town planner, assistant town planner? So, unfortunately, <laughs> I don't. I know we had 16 applications. I know he was interviewing people. I know that was a really high number of applicants. Uh, um, and I want to say at least <laughs> half of those were going to be, he was going to reach out. We're like quality candidates wow. and so I think he was when we last left our hero I think I spoke to him about a week ago and he was going to be setting up phone interviews as kind of a screen and then um, the next step in the process will be um, I think he'll have a few people in there will be a, a couple of the final candidates will meet with the town manager myself and Taylor in person um, and then once the hirings complete they'll meet everyone all, all the people and um, are we going to have a going away party for Griffin? We should thank Griffin. He, I think, is officially through June 30th. Yeah. So how would we... Well, let's, let's figure out a way to yeah. thank him, because he yeah. definitely put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this town. And he's off into the world. It's very exciting. Tears? Tears? I bet. <laughs> I mean, right before a town meeting, who didn't? <laughs> Oh. And as I far as tears. I know, uh, if anyone's curious, I believe 3A was getting all its final stamps and getting submitted. There, it required epic numbers of signatures, but when I last heard, I think it had all the signatures and it was off to the state. Excellent, excellent, yep. excellent. Yeah, I don't know what, we'll, we'll make sure we allow time for um, updates from Taylor. I don't know how, let me see if I can get... Thank you. 
Let's see if I can get an estimated time. We officially have three minutes before the petition starts, so. Okay. Look at that. It's like, like magic. <laughs> He's just waiting to be summoned. You <laughs> said your name three times. And, you <laughs> and there you are. Oh, no, you get, you get that. You yeah, get that. no, come on up. <laughs> Don't be shy. Now entering the ring, Taylor Herman, our town planner. We're ready to start the petitions. Did you have any updates you wanted to add before we kind of went over? Do you, what, how, what has the list of assistant town planners been whittled down to? Uh, so we got 16 applicants, um, narrowed it down to eight potentials. We've interviewed two, and there are four more interviews this week. Um, it will be a three-stage interview process. A, um, a phone call with me <coughs> first, then a meeting with me, and then a meeting with hey, Beth and you. Uh, and Ken Pruitt. And Ken Pruitt. Yeah. Great. So ongoing. It should, the interviews should wrap up, I would say, by the end of the month. Great. We also mentioned trying to figure out a send off for Griffin, so if you have any. Okay. Yeah. He's through June thirtieth, right? Yep, through the end of the month. He would he would probably just like like a tea time at a good golf course. He would. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just to, for the folks following along at home, Griffin O'Neill has been our intern from the Northeastern Co-op program, who has supported us through the three A process and since January, February. When did he start? January. January. So he's been with us for six months, and he has graduated from Northeastern, and will wrap up his internship at the end of June. So we want to make sure we thank him for his hard work. And with that, it is just about 7.15. Who are you folks here with? Uh, we are 23 Ledgewood. Okay, great. 72 Ledgewood, would you? Oh, okay. okay, great, gotcha. Um, oh, I just, I'm sorry, one more update. Mm -hmm. So when we did Loring Court, we said that we wanted to make sure they came in in August, mm -hmm. sort of halfway through to November. Yep. I think we might want to, I mean, I recognize it's only the beginning of June, the middle of June, but we might want to poke them and see if we can get them on our schedule. That's a good point. Get them on the schedule. I did go over there the other day. It looks like the second house is, at least exterior, is wrapped up. Um, who knows about the interior, but it looks like they have made it actually significant process since we last met. Okay. Uh, I know that the the... Someone moved into house number one, um, but nothing has started on house number three. I don't remember. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll have to go back on our notes. I don't remember what our, I don't remember what we asked. I th yeah, I think we were just looking we for We just wanted an accountability, accountability we, meeting in August to make sure that they were progressing as promised. That was it, so that the neighbors could get an update because they promised to wrap up all of the work by essentially Thanksgiving, and we didn't want to find out in late October that they were off schedule. So we just want, it could be very short if all is going well, um, but we would like to see them and make sure that they're on course. Um, okay. Anything else? <clears throat> okay, so we can open the petitions and we should start with 72 Ledgewood. Um, anything the, uh, so, special I just get to the right page for that one. Right. 72 Ledgewood was. Get it out of order, let's see. Uh, can, we, can we get it up on the big screen? <laughs> You're hoping. Maybe. <clears throat> try. I'll see what I can do. Let me see. Is it here? Um, well, we know, I know that the petitioners emailed me. They said they have a presentation. We can just do that. Okay. Oh. You want how, how do you have it? On a thumb drive, computer? What's that? The presentation. Is it physical, uh, digital? I have a piece of paper. Perfect. <laughs> Yep. Can, we, can we just get our packet up on the screen? <clears throat> yes. The, the easiest. Looks like it's page 106 in the packet, the digital packet. 
So that's, this is the site plan in uh, it's two sheets. I think you have all that. Uh, this, is, this is in our packet, right? Yeah. 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 It is, yeah. Hmm? We're searching for the number. My name is David Romero, by the way, of Commonwealth Engineering. Great. And so the the petition here is to take down the existing your rebuild the walk us through it. I'm sorry, yeah, the it's a it's an undeveloped lot. Right, so we okay. are gonna so be removing them. a lot of uh, a lot of it's a wooded lot and we're gonna be building a, a single family home with the driveway and all the typical utilities connections. And um, it's pretty challenging because when you take woods down and you, know, you put a lot of impervious, you have to do a lot of mitigation. And we have presented a lot of mit extensive mitigation on this site with infiltration, uh, stone trenches. Um, it got reviewed by a town engineer, Matt Schumann, and we have responded to that as he added some more mitigation, some more stone trenches. So we basically picked up just about every drop of water that's coming on the site is we're going to be controlling, and that's the, probably the biggest challenge. Otherwise, it's a standard. Everything else is pretty standard. Utilities get sewer, water, and uh, all the utilities. It's a fairly flat lot, so it's not a lot. We do have some smaller walls, a four-foot wall, I think, like more kind of a landscaping wall on the edges. Uh, but other than that, nothing, uh, nothing out of the ordinary. Okay, so this begins on page 103 of the packet, and the renderings are... So you're looking, you want to build a house greater than 5,000 feet? Yeah, that's why we're here, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're going for the ZBA next week. Mm -hmm. and I believe you make a recommendation to the ZBA, so that's how it works, right? Right, yeah. <clears throat> I think, so, oh, sorry. I mean, you have to... Uh, Obviously, you have to satisfy the town engineer. Yeah, that's our that's our main uh, objective. It's, it's that's what this is all about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, uh, and we're in the process of doing that. I, no, it's, I, I spoke it's... with the town engineer today. Uh, he hadn't finished the review yet, uh, but he did mention a couple things to me that I've already remedied. So we're on our way. Just a matter of time, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the reasons you need a site plan review is because you're doing grade cut more than you know more than six percent over 500 yes. feet so Pretty you said that it was fairly flat but that would indicate that you actually are doing a reasonable amount if, of if you well if you if you saw the lot it, it certainly looks like it's flat maybe there are some grades on there but uh per, i think even the memo says predominantly flat area of the oh it's a front, not flat area of the property um yeah, so there is there is some fill gonna gonna occur here for the retaining walls to flatten out the top where the house is. That's basically what we're doing. So how much fill are we talking about? Oh, I haven't got that number. I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just I have no idea how much you are going to be <clears throat> changing the grade. <clears throat> so that would be a really useful thing to know to know whether or not it's reasonable or not. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm I can, familiar I can with come that. out with that, that cal a field calculation if that's what you want, sure. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'm, f I'm familiar with the lot. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. As you, it does appear pretty flat, but it's... It does um, appear... It's, but it's, the grade is, you know, the, the it area is, a little is deceiving. down and you're yeah. trying to... Yeah. So there must be a calculation of, okay. you know, the area that you are changing. Okay, yeah, I can come up with a fill for you, sure. I mean, it's... <clears throat> How tall are your um, retaining walls going to be? Uh, four feet, the tallest. It's going to they're going to taper down to just about a foot. And that's in the rear of the property. What's that? Is that the rear of the property? Uh, kind of on the side, next to the abutters. There's, if you look on the plan here, the red, mm -hmm. the red is a retaining wall. You see that? That's a retaining wall. It's it's at four feet on the side, and it tapers down. And so all of those. Those um, contour lines in the back, is that where you're going to, are those untouched? That's where, yeah, that's going to be some fill because it, we're flattening it out. Not so much that we're changing the grade, but we're flattening it out. Well, 
technically yeah. that is changing the grades. So. It is, but I guess the point saying I'm just saying we're not like raising it up. It's just we're it's kind of still we're kind of flatten it out. So it's like this, mm -hmm. and you're making it like that. Right. So, so that is that's changing the grade. Yeah, my point being I'm not raising the grade. Maybe I should have clarified that. I'm sorry. You're, you are you are introducing a change in the grade. Yes, we are. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so there are outstanding questions left for the engineer, is that correct? And then the, I mean, that area is lots of, I think 5,000 square feet is not unusual for that area. It's not unusual for the lots to be changed, like you're not doing anything radical. We just want to make sure it's in character for the neighborhood. Do we have? So we're, you're waiting for comments to come back from engineering, and then we're waiting for fill information. Yeah. Right. What else do we, what other comments from the board? These are abutters lots, right? We've got pictures of, of homes in the neighborhood. Do we have renderings of the, we have a sketch. What do we have for what's proposed? I believe we do. This is a, okay. Okay, great, thank you. That wasn't in the packet. That's and nice that's and that's which that's from the street or that's from a neighbor. Where's that from? That is, I believe. So the front. So this is the port, the front porch <coughs> of the house. Um, I, that, but that garage is not facing the street, is that right? That's what I'm saying. This is the front porch facing the street. Is that correct? Yeah. No, that would be the back. Right? That's the back. So that's we're looking. Front. So yeah. this. Okay, gotcha. The front is to the left. The street is to the left in this drawing. Okay, so we're looking at the side of the garage. How many trees are getting removed for this? Well, they've been removed. They've already been removed. Okay, how many trees were removed? I'd say a lot. And the, the landscaping plan includes some replacement? No. There's a, yeah, lots of. Yeah, there's a nice drawing in there of the landscaping. There's, there's, there's quite a bit of landscaping now. Okay, there we go. Yes, great. Great. Taylor, can you help explain what, what what are the, the, it seems like there's two issues. The size of the house being greater than 5,000 square feet is something we need to ponder. And then the change in grade, is that the only, are those the only two um, factors that, that we're looking at specifically per bylaws? That is correct. And, and, and because, uh, because of those changes, we then look more deeper into the engineering. I mean, this, from a hydrology, hydrology, hydrology standpoint, this is a, you know, there's there's a lot going on. Okay. Um, this is going to be. I, I mean, I, I I looked at everything. I think I think with working with the engineers, and they are doing that. They've they've proven to do that. Um, um, that uh, there's still more engineering to do. But besides besides that, um, there isn't too much of this proposal that's that's overly complex yeah. no it's you know the, the yeah so there's a series of if you go at 957 of the zoning bylaw it says what are the criteria that we have to evaluate things under site plan review um, so the two things that you have triggered the site plan review are the the uh, changing grade and the size of the building, but we still have to go through the list of 11 things. <clears throat> yeah. Make sure that they all. Okay, so the, the scale of the building, um, so this, I mean, this is, we all, do we know, we all know where Ledgewood is. This is sort of the scale this of this neighborhood. These are large houses yeah. that are. It's on, a big lot. It's not a historic area. Um, so I think the first one is, is covered. The second one, there's no particular historic resource in that area. Um, we discussed the cut and fill and the removal of the trees. Um, no stone walls were removed, right? You're adding stone wall. No. Okay. One, one, removed, yep. one question about the trees. Do we actually have the number of removed trees, six inches in caliper or larger? That should be listed on the plot, on your drawings. You don't have that. We don't have that. No. Okay, that's 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 number. Yeah, I mean, 
we removed the trees. Could you um, please? Yeah, I'm Tim Ford, I'm sort of the project coordinator and the builder. Um, we removed the trees after consulting with the building inspector and the conservation commission. So they're it's over. Like we just went out there and cut the trees. They're gone. They're, they're gone. gone. They're gone. They're gone. But we did we did speak with the building inspector and conservation. And they don't have any particular jurisdiction over the replacement, but they felt like the planting plan was an adequate replacement. It seems like it. And they weighed in on the species, or not really? Uh, at that point, I don't think there's anything in the bylaws that prohibits tree cutting in of itself. What triggers this is the 5,000 square foot. No, I know, but we still and try we to protect off. the natural landscape. Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah. But um, and we, at that point, we, we did not have house plans developed. We certainly hadn't developed those house plans. So, uh, in fairness to the building inspection, in fairness to the uh, conservation, I think they were answering within their own purview. But we, you know, we certainly sought out advice before we got them. Great. Also, on the fill thing, if you look through the site plan that they put together, the largest or the deepest depth of fill is four feet. So, in some spots, you know, coming from the road, which would be zero, and we get up by the house, we're filling four feet. And as we take it to the back of the lot, we're going back to to the neighbor if you want. And how there is the connection between the proposed sports court with the short staircase in the house, is that open lawn or is that hardscape? Uh, that's mostly open lawn. We have a wall in between the house and the sports court. I see the wall. Okay. Yeah. It, yeah. I think all the hardscape is shown as such on the plan right now. The driveway, the walkway in the front and the sports court. It just seems like another place you're going to end up with hardscape because people are not going to want to keep trekking through soggy lawn, but I'm just looking at what might change down the road. Other, I mean, other than that, let's see. So then stormwater management's in process, maximize pedestrian vehicular safety. I don't think there's an issue that we need to raise there. It's a slow road. There's one curb cut, right? Yeah, we'll have a curb cut. Yeah, there. there's no... Yeah. <coughs> uh, adequate access the streets already set up for fire and emergency service equipment uh, obstruction of the scenic view <coughs> from publicly accessible locations is not relevant I don't think minimize visual intrusion HVAC systems transformers I'm assuming there's nothing that's going to be visible that's not represented here nope Look, uh, looking at the plans headlights and lighting intrusion Lighting for the sports court is not going to interrupt the neighbors. No, I think there's something special. You have lighting on that that's going to, going to, going to basically splash down to not, not leave the site. Okay. And then contamination of groundwater from on-site waste disposal. That's engineering's handling that, I assume. And then compliance with the zoning bylaw, including parking signs, landscaping, and environmental standards. Anyone have any concerns about anything on the 11-point list? That I'm cruising over. I just have no idea how much cut and fill there is, so I can't. Yeah, so I can't. It could be massive amounts. It could. You just. <laughs> you don't have numbers. I don't. I don't think it's going to be massive amounts, but I'll, I will get that number for you. Yeah. Is the court the same elevation as the house, or is that meant to be graded down, up or down? I think it's down a little bit. That's why the steps are there. Below the wall. Yeah. 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 I mean, to be honest, it's it's really the ZBA, which is. I mean, we're going to come to a decision tonight. So the ZBA may really want to know what the yeah, well, I'll is. definitely do it. Yeah, but it's you know, can't take your word for it. No, it's Just, uh, yep. it's fine. Yeah, I, I understand that. Sure. So with or without, so even if we decide we're missing information and we need to postpone our decision until we have complete information, the ZBA still votes before we make a recommendation, right? I'm sorry. Could you? That, repeat? that is correct. They are meeting. Yeah. On the twenty the twenty when, when's your meeting? Twenty sixth? Twentieth. Twentieth, yeah. Yeah. So so. Thursday, yeah. Yeah. So we don't have we don't have another planned meeting before then, so they will they will vote regardless if we do or not. But we can include any um cares we have for lack mm -hmm. of a better word mm -hmm. in our recommendation. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you want to say more about concerns you'd like to include in a recommendation? Well, I, I will tell you that I'm going to abstain from this vote because I don't have enough information. I would, you know, that's just the way I feel about it. 
Okay, so for perspective, we give a recommendation to the ZBA, which they can take into consideration, but they'll vote either way. So our options would be to approve with concerns, to, uh, to recommend unfavorable action, or to abstain because we don't have enough information, in which case, unless they postpone to have uh, time to get more information, um, we would sort of be out of the discussion, I guess. Mm -hmm. to it. Um, could Dave make that information available to maybe staff and uh, you know, for the next day or two, Dave? Would that be fair to say that? Yeah, I could do it. I could do it. We next won't day too. convene to vote, though. Yeah, we, we won't be back oh, in session. I mean, we're an advisory board, so yeah. we, you know, we hope the ZBA pays attention to us, but it's a hope. Well, so. I, I don't want to speak for Dave, but we certainly want to make that information available. Yeah. We didn't intentionally leave that out. Yeah, I just. It's the way things stacked up, so, yeah. Okay, so is there a motion based on available information? So, so I'm trying to think how to phrase it. I, you know, I would move that we take we can, we can split it into two. We could say um, we can look at the impact of the size of the house and everything, and we can have an opinion on that. And then we could have another motion which talks about um, the cut and fill, because those are, you know. So, you know, I would move that, you know, we recommend favorable action on the Massing, um, location, design um, of the project. Second. Okay. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. Aye. so Aye. that passes unanimously. And I would move that we take no action on the cut and fill. Um, underlying our concern that we do not have enough information to determine whether or not it is actually minimizing the amount of cut and fill that. I would second that motion. Okay. All in favor? Oh, yeah. Aye. 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 So also unanimous. Okay. If, there, if anything happens with the ZBA, it will come back to us for another vote for a recommendation based on whatever, but if they... Okay. They'll vote with our recommendations, and I mean, I would <clears throat> I'd just bring them the number. Oh yeah. yeah, it's just it's sort of like saying you want relief on the height, and not telling them what the height's going to be. Yeah. You know, I just want to know the. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. Maybe, Thank you. Maybe one last point. Did you concern the depth of the field or the volume? Just the volume. The volume yeah. And you know. Is there a way of doing, doing the development which could reduce that amount of fill? Yeah. You know, are you, you know, are you saying that I have to have a, a, you know, a level lot which is larger than it really needs to be? You know, if you're worried about play areas for kids, then does it have to be the entire lot? I mean, there are a lot of design considerations that could go into determining whether or not there's a way to mitigate excess of cut and fill, but without knowing anything about the scope of it, it's, you right. can't make a decision. What's driving, what's driving the fill is actually the depth of groundwater. The groundwater that I think was relatively high, about yeah. three or four feet. Got it. So, yeah. in it. so just got to see it on the plot. Okay. 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 Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Coming in. Good night. Okay. Which page number are we on now? Uh, so next on our list, so I know we have two Ravencroft here. Who are, who are you guys here from? We're 24 Vines. Okay, great. So technically you are up next. Okay, so 20. I think that's the first one, right? No, that's the second one. Which number page is that? Da, da, da. Oh, it's on page 40. Page 40. I think, yes, page 40 is where Taylor's memo shows up. Okay, 
great. Okay, so you are here for a special permit because the setback is changing and the addition of the 308 square foot expansion moves you to an area greater than 3,600 square feet, yes? Correct. And you're adding a sunroom. Mm -hmm. And what would you like to say about your project? So um, we are at 24 Vine Street right next to the um, First Congregational Church and we're facing Wedge Pond. Our mm -hmm. current setup has um, essentially one window facing the water um, and yes. nothing else. So that's kind of the reason for um, the kind of initial motivation for the addition. And that's pretty different from pretty much all the other waterfront um, properties around the pond. The other thing is it's um, a five bedroom with one bath, one full bathroom. So we're also um, on the second level of the addition, adding um, a bathroom to kind of address that. Um, the current space that we're building the addition in has uh, a wooden deck, um, essentially that goes, and we're expanding um, under a foot and a half, um, just kind of to the edge of the house. Um, and that kind of extra f few inches is essentially the amount that we're going over the setback. Um, and then the, in terms of the square footage, the square footage incorporates our half of the house as well as our neighbor's half of the house. So our, we're not actually adding very much square footage, nor do we in our own unit actually have that much square footage. Um, the other things, so we um, have the full support of the church um, and their garden committee because um, we face their uh, meditation garden mm -hmm. as well as of the, um, the co-owners of our kind of two unit house. Mm -hmm. um, their big request for us was that we don't build a deck um, facing out back from our house because they have a deck um, mm -hmm. there and so that they didn't want us kind of right next to them. So that's part of why we have the stone patio to the side. I think we see that on page 56 if you've yeah. got your packet open, the rear view. So that deck that's on the back of the house is theirs. Yes. So your deck is the one to the right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Right. And so you will be extending further to the right or further back. So essentially the wooden deck, so essentially that wooden deck that you can see right there yep. is gonna be the space where we have the sunroom. Okay. So it's Great. just gonna so kind of gonna fill be in that corner. In. Okay. Exactly. And then the stone patio that we currently have that you can see kind of in that image right to the right, mm -hmm. um, it was a DIY job by the previous owners and it's kind of a tripping hazard um, and mm -hmm. we've actually tried to mitigate it but it is just still yeah, you know, still an issue, right. and so we're planning to have that. Um, and there's also a bunch of steps in there, and it's just kind of generally a little bit unsafe. And so we're planning to actually have that slightly elevated and um, flat without any steps in between. Mm -hmm. And the, the um, folks at the church were also concerned that there's a lot of, I think because it wasn't kind of properly built, there's a lot of issues with runoff and um, kind of um, water drainage there. So um, the contractor we're working with is, has kind of plans to address that and um, that was kind of their so that's part of why the the church is kind of happy with the the plan to, to do this so that's kind of the okay overview. so you're raising the stone walkway to the height of that top step um we're raising it um about like a, about a foot or so just very, ever so slightly okay gotcha and then it will be a solid impervious right now it looks like they're sort of spacers like yeah correct okay so this is less than 500 square feet. It's only 384. So you don't have to go through engineering to get a stormwater, but you are talking about stormwater mitigation. Um, I'm glad to hear that. I just want to make sure that while you, when you do that, you might want to consult with engineering to make sure that they can give you some ideas on how to do it. Of course, engineering may not be happy asking me to for me to ask you to go see them, but. <laughs> Um, it, it, since it is, you know, it's less than 500 square feet, they don't have to uh, opine. Okay. So. Um, okay. Any other questions or concerns from the board about this project? Does this project need to go to the Conservation Commission because of the proximity to the body of water behind it? It's actually slightly farther. I think it's like um, it actually like doesn't quite reach. I think the con the border to the wedge pond is actually in front of our house, like around where the front decks are. 
Your, so your outside, what would it be there, the 100, 200 foot buffer? You slipped past buffer? that one, too. <laughs> you see it you slipped under. past that one, yeah. too, yeah. I, we, we, we I feel like we paradoxically slipped into all the wrong ones. Like, that one <laughs> feels like it would have made more sense than the, like, three inches that were over the setback, but... <laughs> I mean, aren't you... We, we, spoke, we spoke with them, and they said that we were outside the yeah. limit. Okay, that's, we are architected. That's the key thing. You have okay. the official proclamation. And you're, yeah. It's not, it's, uh, forgive me if I'm mistaken, it's not three inches. It's, isn't it? It's more four, than sorry. four feet, it's, three, it's, it's three feet, three inches or something, because it's 11, seven, it should be 15. So the really? current deck is at 14 and seven. Yeah. Right. And so, and then our current project would be at 15. Okay, so... Okay, so that doesn't that's match with... That doesn't make sense. Wait, what? No, then that's not right. So you're contracting it by... You're saying you're contracting it by that... Exactly. Least, but you're expanding into the... If it's currently 14.7, it's going gonna, it's gonna to decrease by the amount of the addition. I, I don't okay. know. Go by, go, by that, go by what's yeah, there. I the <laughs> you're actually fortuitous that you're at 14.7 and not 15 because it... Yeah, puts let's you see. into a special permit as opposed to a very yeah, this, is, oh, this is right okay so you are you are actually reducing mm -hmm. you're encroaching into the setback by an additional three feet three feet which is a third of the setback of no i can't do math today the fifth, <laughs> the fifth. Is, so, but it does but our current deck encroaches into the setback Yes, mm -hmm. but we're, yeah. increasing we're increasing by point three, no, though. Yeah, well, your current deck. Now it'll be three point. Three. Yeah, so so the key thing is that if you look at that table there, <laughs> you're changing, regardless of the one encro encroachment, you are making it worse in one direction by three feet. Okay. So yep. yeah, and that's my only concern is um, is the is that sort of setback. Um, this is a crowded area, and uh, I'm trying to find the... What is this size? And that's the west side, so that is towards the congregational yep. church, yep. so you're yeah. encroaching on the setback and between you and the church. And one thing about our setback is it's actually a diagonal, so we encroach, we don't encroach along the whole length of that deck, we encroach at the tip. A single point, yeah. Well, yeah, and some, some, like some, in, some, some, it's yeah. a corner. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. just the corner of the building. I mean, you're kind of just extending the line of the building. Yeah. yeah. It's not, you're not bumping it out uh, three feet. Hadn't really thought about it that way. That makes a lot more sense. It's not bending out toward the property right. line. The property line's bending. So, yeah. In, in some jurisdictions, they view just extending the line of the building as <laughs> much less. Yeah, I mean, I... I don't think the congregational, I mean, obviously, it, it doesn't look like you're going to impact them much, but it's, I'm always concerned about setbacks. So um, I can make a motion. I would welcome a motion. Before you make the motion, can I understand, um, again, Taylor, I'm going to go back to you, sorry. What are we, we there's two things, because there's, a waiver of site plan review, is, is that something that's being asked for us to opine on or not? Is, is this the one with the waiver of site plan review? I thought Richard... Oh, Maybe no. I got the wrong, wrong. This is uh, Right, the so waiver. we're waiving right. we're waiving site plan review. Um, so oh. you would have to, yes, vote so on that's that. So that would be part of something that's being asked of us yes. to yep. opine on. Okay, sorry, I just wanted to... So to deal with the easy one i would i would move that we recommend site plan review be waived because it is a minimal addition to the size of the structure second i am just looking back over so we won't see we don't have any Okay, I'll, I'll um, it, uh, we have a second for that. Is there any discussion on the motion? Okay, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, it's unanimous. And 
I would then move that we recommend favorable action on the special permit. Second. Okay, there is a motion and a second to recommend favorable action on the special permit. Any discussion on the motion? I guess the discussion is I was, when I first looked at this, I saw it as going closer to the property line and I thought, I, I, I like the way John described it because I think it, it puts it into my head better that it's still going straight back um, because I do think it's, um, I don't love the idea of just because you're um, non-conforming that you can then continue to continue to, to, to ex continue to expand the non-conformity, which this does technically do. But I think because it's going straight back, I have, I can wrap my head around that that's a very reasonable thing to do, and I can picture why you'd want to do it. So, just yeah. wanted to say that. And really, the, given this this neighbor, <clears throat> the neighbor is not going to change and. Never we hope. Know, you never know, we but hope, we hope. We hope we, not. Is know. there a letter? We don't have a letter from them, right? We don't have a letter of support for this. No, uh, we uh, didn't realize that was a thing, so we actually just asked, texted them a few days ago, and so they're working on it. Yeah. That'll be helpful for right. the ZBA when you yeah, go there. We realize we're there next week, yeah. so we <laughs> yeah. realize that at one of the other hearings. Yeah. But to be honest, we we're talking to Ed I, I would have much more significant concerns if it weren't the church next door, if it yeah. were another residence within right. spitting need distance. To hear from that Someone on, on a small lot, yeah. you, you know, and you were very close to their home, you know, their kitchen window or something. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, they're probably, yeah. All right, is any other discussion? Anyone else want to add discussion to the motion? Okay, so all in favor? Aye. Aye, it's unanimous. Good luck with the project. Good luck. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Meet you both. So for the next one, I suggest <coughs> we set aside the I Ching rule. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have anyone here from 62 Richardson, so we will hop ahead. Not page that, that one's on. Go <laughs> six. 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 Oh, are you guys Ravenscroft or Richardson? I get them. I get them. Ravenscroft. Right. You're Ravenscroft. Ravenscroft. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can do that for. Yeah. All right. What page are we on? Ravenscroft. Uh, Would you like to tell us about your project? Um, you are adding. Uh, hold on, just tell me. <laughs> okay. Eaching and Mark Scott to Ravenscroft. Um, we are very similar to the last project in that we are two, um, two, two side-by-side -side condos, um, each of which are less, around 3,000 square feet. Ours is a little more, there's a little less, and together we're more than 5,000 square feet. Um, it is in a historical district, the Everett Historical District. Um, however, in some of the, um, a lot of the neighboring houses, there's just been very similar additions in the back some a lot bigger. So we are hoping to add 176 square feet, very small, hopefully to you, um, uh, and then 156 square foot deck. Um, we're just asking for site plan review, so we're not encroaching on any of the setbacks at all. Um, we didn't ask for a waiver, which I would like to talk to you about, maybe after this fact, but, <laughs> um, but the, everything is within setback. Um, so, what else is there to say? Uh, it's, it's, we're, we're expanding our kitchen. It's, it's built in the 1890s. It's still kind of an 1890s kitchen. And so we're just trying to square it off and make it more comfortable. And there's an existing deck and staircase that lead to the back. And we are bringing the addition out to the edge of that existing deck and staircase. So we're not expanding the footprint uh, on the ground uh, of the building itself. Mm -hmm. um, and there is an area underneath the kitchen. So there's a <coughs> basement, there's a walkout basement, it's on a hill. Um, so that is just gonna become like a storage space. It will be enclosed and insulated. Um, additionally, we selected that location in the back of the house because that, you know, the house, uh, the front of the house faces Ravenscroft Road. We have, of course, neighbors to the left side. Uh, towards the back is a stockade fence, a retaining wall and the side of the neighbor's house on Bacon Street. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of the more the service side of the house. It's where all the bathrooms are, where the kitchens are. 
So we were trying to create an addition that was uh, minimally impactful visually to, to the neighbors, but achieving the, the goals we wanted on the kitchen. And so that's the side for the addition. The deck is facing um, our neighbor at Four Rangers Croft. They'll probably be the only ones who see it. Um, they signed uh, approval um, support, and then all, all three neighbors have, have signed support. Great. Yeah. Including bacon, 62 yes. bacon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have to get their support. <laughs> I was going to say that when you very, yeah, yeah. very happy you will. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, it. Then, any questions you have, let us know. Uh, I, thought it, I thought it made a lot of sense. Yeah, it's a nice... You, you it's, know, you have to... You could see the kitchen. You're making it work. Kind of a more <laughs> modern, <laughs> modern kitchen for the next <clears throat> whole bunch of years, you know. There are it's challenges the to house to remain. Every piece of history forward. <laughs> was I was this, thinking about servicing the condensers, coming. but <laughs> <laughs> was this house originally a tech family, family, or was it? It's it's originally, it was a family that's so little. I think we're just going to have this wall to like that's under the deck, yeah. so that we can just. That's hold, you know, so there are several houses. two families along the, that bacon line. We talked about this through the MBTA three stuff, yeah. but um, also even on Lakeview, there are a couple of two families yeah. original. So, I have a motion. I would t did you want to raise? No, I didn't know if we needed. I, no, I don't actually have any concerns okay. whatsoever. Just I just didn't know if we needed to go through anything further. I mean, it's such a small it's addition. A small project in it's conforming hands. with the uh, setbacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I don't think they're going to pull one over. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't have anything I need to. Okay. To, no, it's good to be. It's good to really, be thorough. Did you want to? Uh, did you want to raise anything about? Well, that? just maybe for the record, but um, so the the choice for us because it's it's under five hundred square feet, we could ask for a waiver, or you know, go through with all of this, right? But the documentation for both the waiver and this are the same. But if I were to ask for a waiver and say it got denied, I would lose about two months worth of product. And, and as an end user, and I think just sitting at this table, and you know, like two architects, I've been on the planning board, I understand this stuff, but it was like really quite onerous actually, right? Like this, there's so many steps to understand. Um, just, you know, it came up when I was on, on the board. Some others were like, this, this is too much. This, is, this doesn't make sense. This little waiver issue doesn't make sense. And I'm here to t tell you again that it doesn't make sense. <laughs> so if you have any extra time, maybe put it under the bucket of, like, help the end user with a zoning code that actually is useful. Because construction costs are ridiculous, and every single month just adds up so much. And, and this, this kind of labor, it adds on to architects fees i mean good thing we're not paying our architects but <laughs> um there's Does value your architect exchange know they're not being sure. paid? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. um so you're su you're suggesting that we revisit the option to yeah. do a waiver i did try with brian zilk kelly and brian manter um and we were like uh there's too much stuff going on we can't deal with it so, so no pressure we, we can write that but it still we still need support from the zba yeah which is going to be the, the most difficult part of it. Yeah. Well, we, we, sorry, we can write. We can write it, but, but we need the support. Yeah, we, I. In order to. All of town meeting. To yes. Vote for it. We, uh, it has, but, yeah. but, but without, the, but without the support of the ZBA, it won't. Yeah. 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 We, we ran in, I remember those discussions. We couldn't figure out, it was, we were going to go through like the mini site, site plan, plan review. Like, L-I-T-E. Yeah, it was, and they were just so, we looked at different like towns, the they all did something different, and then it was, I think we just threw up our hands in frustration. Yeah. It's, but, it's, yeah. still, it's a little silly. It's a little bit too much, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Helpful feedback. Yes. Um, is there a motion? I move that we recommend favorable action. Is there a second? A second. And all, any more discussion on the topic? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Hey, thank you. Great. Thanks for coming thank in. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck with the project. I hope. I have time. <laughs> <laughs> you, you get to do this again on the 20th, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, bye. 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 Take care, guys. Okay. <clears throat> One right. more to go. Back to 62 Richardson. We do not have anyone here for this. So 62 Richardson uh, requested a continuation from the ZBA to be heard in July. Okay. Um, 
so we uh, can why? Just, it's a complex project. Yeah. Yep. Um, and Are they they're probably going to need they're probably going to need revisions, but they they aren't required to tell us why they want a continuation. So okay. Um, I don't I don't know the I don't know the details. Um, so you could decide to take a look at it now. Um, we would probably or, meet. Actually, had a after, question. After wait, no, we'd probably meet. When will we meet next? We'll probably. About the 20, when does the ZBA meet if, in July? It would be. It would be around the. Um, it would be probably the week of the twenty-first. Okay. So July. they are probably so. So would they have time to submit a new packet to us before they meet with the ZBA? If that is what they are going to do, they would have. We would receive that packet. Okay. So in our new sort of rhythm, we would then discuss it probably on July. We have to discuss the schedule, but presumably July <coughs> July ninth. So I I'll be in Oregon then. So, but that's okay. That okay. assumes that they are going to be submitting it several weeks ahead of the ZBA meeting. Yeah. That's the problem. I, if, so my recommendation <laughs> is to view it today, discuss it, but not you don't have to you don't have to vote. That's my recommendation because we don't know what what our timing is going to be. Just at least familiarize yourself with what is being proposed. Okay, you want to give us the download? Well, did historic make a, did they have their meeting and there they, will be a demo delay. They have yeah. decided for a demo delay. Yeah. Have you looked at the property? I haven't. I didn't actually get by there today. I looked at all the paperwork attached to it, but I didn't. Yeah, I've, I know the property. And thoughts? I know it's and it's kind of wrapped up in white vinyl. And it's had a bunch of stuff done to it over the years, but wrapped up in white vinyl. Oh yeah, okay. lots of white vinyl. Yeah, but there might be, a, you know, I had horrible asphalt shingles on my house and it came off and all of the original gingerbread was, was underneath there. So you never know what you find. Um, so I, I, guess, I, I guess I missed, has historical opined on, they have decided to give it a demo, demo delay? delay. It's, yeah. yep. So they've got a year to at least to come up with something. Um, so the question is, I didn't quite, uh, you know, I looked. Did, did they make the decision to ask for the continuation after Historic's decision came back? Yes. I, I don't, I would be a okay. little surprised if they rushed to alter their drawings to rush and get back here soon. I mean, Are you expecting another continuation, is that what you mean? Yeah, I don't quite under, you know, when I read it, I didn't understand why they weren't just removing all of it, whether they thought just removing two thirds of it would somehow. Well, they thought they, they believed with my, in my conversation with the, um, with the homeowner, uh, leaving the framing up for a portion of the home was their attempt to circumvent demo play. Yeah, so they're essentially. I, I didn't. You know, I mean, you know how much is really going to be left. Yeah, it's it'll be it's I like mean, a few studs. You'd be able to yeah. fit it in the back of a pickup truck. Yeah, but that's yeah. that's all the time. But that was that was their that was their attempt. Um, so, I, I, I guess actually, Carrie, you're you've talked me into it. Maybe it's not worth. I I, I imagine where this is not the final incarnation, and we shouldn't. No. Although it is. Wait. If you, I was looking at it. It's a clever arrangement for townhouses. <laughs> yeah, they're not they're not unattractive. I thought it was um, we need the housing. But it's I imagine this project's gonna change and spending a lot of time on it today probably doesn't. It's a really tight neighborhood. It's just a couple blocks from where I live. Right. Um, yeah, Richardson's narrow lot. It's you know I don't understand how the cars get in and out. I mean, it's there's a there's a very busy drawings, and I haven't figured out exactly where the driveways are, except that they have a new one. Um, so. Is it? A, it's a. Yeah, I think it's. It's a corner, so they're going from two to or right. a three-sided. They have streets on three sides of the property. Yes, they do. It's, so they are going from three. So driveways to two. So if we scroll to page one hundred, I believe. 
Yeah. What you'll see, now that's, yeah, that's close enough. So notice the way that it looks like there's a bridge between the two houses. Mm -hmm. That's actually against what's in our zoning bylaw in terms of connectivity of duplexes. <clears throat> You, so we you actually you'd have to unified if massing, you went back to the drawing before that you'd be able to judge that better dumbbells well i mean at least from this viewpoint it looks like two buildings connected by a it, it may look that way but if you you can see i think you need to have 25 what portion of the wall because you have well i mean they've got if you look at that it's hardly distinguishable as two buildings yeah, but we're looking at the, the elevation and the elevation, if you go in our zoning bylaws, we, there are examples of what it should look like. Yeah. This is not one of them. This is actually called out as a design we dislike because it really looks like you've taken two small things and shoved them together. If they had, for instance, extended the roof line between the two mm -hmm. to fill in that gap, it's the gap in the middle that's the problem. So I, I think at least, you know, I, let me see if I can find. Those di the diagrams are exactly, like this would practically be a yeah. sample diagram from that figure. I looked at it. Yeah, and that. that's, we, we, I mean, Heather Von Mehring drew those up and we drew up in response to someone who wanted to essentially do something that looked just like Isn't that. Isn't there a house that got through on Cross Street that's shaped like this? There are houses which snuck in. Yeah, yeah there are a number of houses and then there, but, you know, there were some, yeah, we've had a number of innovative ways of getting two single families onto a duplex lot. Well, I remember what, what triggered the talk about setting standards for duplexes it was a project at the corner of Swanton and Washington. Yeah, yes. that's the one. Two, they look like the two single two, family they look like two they single family. On Washington, it looks like a single family. On Swan, it looks like a single family. And they're connected sort of like by a 10-foot laundry room. Yeah. <laughs> right? it's, you know, if I went to the open house and I said, this is the part that, you know. That's, it, yeah, that was, the, that was the first one that really. That, and then we've seen that, others that, where they've, they've taken both squares and attached them at corners. You know, they're, right. you know it's, in any case, I would have an issue I with this design. That was when the talk started, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it was a while ago. Yeah, so. It was a while ago, yeah. What happened to the windows? My eyes are watering. Yeah, they, my eyes, yeah. I don't know if they open. My eyes are watering open. from whatever. Yeah, there's an ammonia smell or something. So, okay, so is this. Gonna post, we're going to postpone I, I think it might be useful to, you know, even if we don't vote on this now, mm -hmm. to send our thoughts to the ZBA just in case. <clears throat> there is a mismatch of, you know if, if this doesn't come before us then we want them to know what we said or we had this discussion and at least the concerns i have yeah, about I, the design and such we'll have our minutes from today um but you're thinking we should draft a letter that just a, a quick missive saying we've decided to put off final consideration because we're waiting on changes and we don't know if those changes will come in prior to our next meeting yeah. but we this certainly about design traffic doesn't look like a design that would be i mean i would i would call that out and say that yeah the, you, you suspect it's not it would it's not what is the word not commensurate Unified consistent mapping. it's not consistent with what's the zoning bylaw it, calls it for it says that in the um the letter from the um building commissioner building commissioner yes okay it says i have to find it what what it was uh, but I'm not used to getting letters from the building commissioner. Yeah, he started doing it once Carla came on board. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I'll have to keep I'll have to keep my eye out for the that. Design. It actually might be Carla writing it now I think about it. The um, dwelling units, dwelling uh, duplex dwelling requires units to be fully integrated into coherent unified massing. Your design does not meet that definition. Okay, cool. <clears throat> okay. We can just say we too. Agree. Yeah. yeah. So are we saying we'd like uh, an, a letter forward that says that with no vote put on it, just simply yeah. that was a concern? Yeah. Okay. I move that we make such a letter. Is there a second? Second. second. No. Okay, all in favor. Any discussion on the letter contents? It's only going to have that one, one piece of information, essentially, right? That, yeah. That, okay. we, that we agree with 
the building commissioner that it doesn't have a coherent unified massing. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Great. You moved that. Did I second that? Uh, John, you seconded that? I just have to, these all have to go into the letter. It was a joint second. This is squaring. Oh, we're only okay. seven minutes over. <clears throat> well, not really, because this is actually, right? We don't yeah, actually need this item. We will not be doing item. the WCCP appointment tonight. Oh. Yeah. We, we, we already did it. Yeah. So. I'm sorry, we, we, we already appointed to the section eight of the bylaw committee. Yeah. And we won't appoint to this committee until oh. we actually, yeah. this committee exists, which it doesn't. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Lots of committees in town. So many. Okay. Well, then we're. So, DM. It's all me? It, take it away. Okay. So, um, one of the things that was left over from our 3A work was uh, dealing with the inclusionary housing requirements for the 3A. Um, so the town prior to our 3A zoning had inclusionary requirements which were the same across the center business district, GBD2 and GBD3. And those requirements uh, were based on a percentage of the total number of units. And so they were, if you built more than six units, you had to provide one unit, or essentially 10% of the units had to be affordable at the 80% area of median income. And if you built 25 or more, or tw more than 25, then you had to put in an extra 5% of the units at the 120% of the area median income. So when the t in the town's bylaws, we rounded up. So 10% of six was one. When the state drew up their requirements for 3A, they allowed towns to include inclusionary housing <coughs> But when they defined 10%, they rounded down. So in that case, 10% of six is zero. Um, one of the other requirements the state had was that if you wanted to um, have more inclusionary housing, you had to have a study which showed that, that the extra, it would not be an extra financial burden on development. So we had an analysis done, and the analysis showed and so the first key thing is the analysis used the round up version of the percentage. So they went more conservative. So they actually used the same definition of rounding up as the town did. So we can use their value. We can look at those directly comparable to what the town did. So that analysis showed that we could do, um, we were good for anything essentially above 15 units that we could, we could, we could do the, um, we could actually go up to 100 or 80% AMI down to 15 units rounding up if we wanted to. That'd be so. That would be two units theoretically in a 15 unit. I believe that's the case. Yes, if my math is that that's math or arithmetic, I'm not sure which. 50. Yeah. Yeah. The town approach 15 would be two units. Yeah. 15 would be two units. 14 would be one. 14 would be one. Yeah. 15 is. Yeah. So the. We still have, so, so two things are going. First of all, um, we, the language in our 3A zoning uses the state's definition of rounding because we were concerned that we just wanted to get it through and, and it was late to the post getting the EFA done. So at the very least, we can um, revise the language that exists now to take into account the fact that we can round up and thereby get an additional unit because the, the EFA shows we can do so. Um, the other thing though is that we would like to have a uniform inclusionary across all of our districts, not just have you know this sort of Swiss cheese thing. So in order to do so, we would have to have a um, <coughs> economic feasibility analysis done for the smaller <coughs> number of units at the six units up to 10 unit level to see whether we can come in and round up 
And so then we could mirror what we have in the CBD and GBD two and three. Um, because that's rounding in the opposite direction from the state, we do actually have to have uh, economic feasibility analysis show that it's possible. It's more likely that we won't be able to do it at the six unit level, probably because of the economics, but we don't know where that cutoff is. Is it six or is it seven, eight, nine, whatever. So we talked about going back, getting that analysis done so we could actually nail down how low we can go. And so I don't know how much money it will cost. I would imagine it would be fairly small. It's a very <coughs> tiny analysis. If we were to go to the same consultants who did it, it might be really cheap since they have all of our data already. But we kind of made a promise as a board that we would move forward with this analysis. Um, I won't speak for Nick, but I do believe he, he was part of the agreement that this is something that we would clean up after the fact. Do we know the cost of doing the additional analysis? Uh, we don't know the final cost. I would prefer to keep it under $10,000 so it doesn't have to go, off, go out to RFP, uh, but I don't think that it would exceed that. And, and we've spent all the there was money that was assigned for economic feasibility that's all spent right yeah that was a that was a technical assistance so we wouldn't be able to use that um that was technical assistance from the 3a from somebody <laughs> and uh, and we yeah we wouldn't be able to use we wouldn't be able to use that yeah but i mean there's there's i mean we can even ask michael wang see if we can or if he could if we do it for North Maine, why wouldn't it apply yeah. to the mod? Yeah. 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 So you're thinking maybe we should wait until we get the North Maine finished, or? Oh, I'm 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 not making any suggestions. I'm just trying to say that I I I, I don't see the the cost of this uh, being more than five thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. But if he's doing it anyway, does it make sense to have yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the the thing is, we I believe we still have money in our budget. That's uh, we can't access the mo money in our budget after Friday. July 1st. Really, Friday. Oh, you mean July like first? Friday? Yeah, because because if we want to use the money that's in our budget, we have to we have to basically say that we're going to use it by the end of this week. I would say we should say we know we're who going would do this it. analysis. Like, can can we pull that together? No, we don't I, know. We, I suggest we just say we're going to use it because. But it needs to go into a. Like we needs to go into a check. PO, and it needs to be set aside for somebody. Can we contact the people who did our last analysis? I mean, I just hate to see the money go away. That's all. I mean, we we have. <clears throat> I it seems like it's a good use of end of the year money because we have to do the analysis anyway. So maybe we can reach out to who I've forgotten already who's done our previous one. Started with an R, maybe? I can't remember. Um, Mark Fol Fol Folger. Yeah, I mean, maybe, it, I, if possible, I don't want to, you know, but if possible, if we could get it signed off by the end of the week and get it in, then we would have. Okay, I'll, I'll explore my our options in the morning, and then, um, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if Okay, so if we need, if you need our approval, should we take a quick... Um, can we hear from John Servier? Come on up, take a microphone. I'll, I'll come up to a microphone. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, for those that, that, that don't know me, John Servier from the Housing Partnership Board. Uh, I thought I was arriving early, and then you are earlier. I know, than we, I were, early. we were running ahead of schedule. It's, it's the new uh, planning board. I want to. Uh, get myself in trouble by disagreeing with the um, on one thing. Uh, the, the state guidelines for inclusionary housing are actually silent on, I, I, my understanding is they're silent on rounding up or rounding down. Uh, so they don't have a requirement there. What, what they did in their, <coughs> in addition to the guidelines, they provided an example of an inclusionary zoning bylaw uh, that rounded up. And when town council, in that, and town council basically copied or adapted the example uh, rather than the guidelines. 
So, uh, I mean, that's that's a minor point. I, I mean, I agree with, again, I apologize for coming in late, that it would be useful to refine, clean up the EFA <coughs> that was done. Uh, I don't know if, if, uh, if the current consultants are willing to do that, if they're able to do that, if they have time to do that. Uh, I think one of the problems we encountered before is that they were, they were just overextended. And there may be a slight window uh, because there was a whole bunch of towns that went to town meeting this spring. There'll be another e at least equal sized bunch going in the fall. Uh, so it may be that over the summer, you know, there's an opportunity uh, <coughs> to do that. Also, I mean, my interpretation, it's been a while since I've read the EFA and studied it, so uh, I may be out on this one. Uh, my interpretation was that that the, the lower limit might be closer to eight than six, but I thought that the way they run the numbers, it was actually lower than 15. The, they didn't have a model below 15. No, I know that. Yeah, that was, so, so we were, I think, Taylor, you were looking at Lexington's. Yeah, based yeah. off of, based <clears throat> off of other similar communities with yeah. similar econo housing economics, um, it looks like we, it would probably be eight, but we didn't have that exact yeah. number. No, and, and, and uh, I mean, one of the, there were, there were multiple problems with the EFA. One of them was that, I mean, Taylor and I, I lost count. I need three hands. The number of times we asked them to analyze the existing, Winchester's existing inclusionary housing bylaw, they never said, no, we're not going to do that uh, until they produced their report in which they then created a hypothetical <laughs> bylaw for Winchester that was different than what we actually have. And they know they should have known. They had the zoning code. We told them. We gave it, described to it in writing. So they didn't do exactly what we asked them to do. And that's, that's triggered a number of these problems. Yeah, I mean, it's the end result is that it covers most of what we need, regardless. Oh, absolutely. So, so moving forward, I mean, my feeling is this is easy money for them. It's like a few hours max of work because they've got the spreadsheets, they got the numbers, all they have to do is dial, you know, from 15 down to six and see where it oh, goes. Yeah. Red no, no. And so when we gave them comments on, on their draft, I outlined and described a three sentence paragraph that I asked them to insert and they didn't do it. <clears throat> the, so. They inserted a version of that. Yeah. I went I went back I went over that with them. We verified that the language was backed up by their models. And so they inserted language which was consistent with their models. The key addition was that they used a round up approach. Yeah. And so that was the key addition they could make based on because that's what they had yeah. actually oh, yeah. done. So I I mean the <clears throat> language that was added I think was no, and, and what that does is by de facto uh, set the limit at 10. Yes. It, and uh, and what, what we, when we drafted the original bylaw, uh, Edith Netter was the consultant, and we debated and discussed, you know, where that lower threshold should be. Uh, this is more background as, uh, you know, should it be 15, should it be 10, uh, should it be 6? And what we saw was that if you put the limit at 10, you have developers will come in with nine unit proposals. If you set it at 12 or 15, they'll come in with one unit less. So they're, they're gonna to try to avoid it. And so what we did was set it low at six and then do two things to provide kind of an out or an escape if, a, if it didn't really work for a six unit development. Uh, and one was they could, negotiate a, a payment in lieu of units. Uh, it, yeah, and that, that is actually one of the things we did not put in the 3A zoning yeah, is, is a yeah. payment in lieu of, and you know. I mean, the other, the other thing we put in uh, was the option 
for an off-site unit. Yeah, and we didn't we didn't that put that did in there. In. That did not get in, and I th that's a policy decision as to whether you want to. We can go back into that. Yeah, um, I and mean, we can discuss but, this, you know, in more depth. I can get into but, the reasoning for that. And but I mean, at the very least, I mean, the hope the hope was that those provisions would never be used. Yeah. So they were insurance. Yeah, I mean, there's the the easy part is getting the numbers, right? Yeah. We will, probably won't be able to get to six, but we'll get to something. Yeah. Um, and then the question of what to do if there, if you require the extra flexibility, because as you pointed out in some discussion we had, um, having the other options means that if you have someone who wants to put units into a particular difficult to develop property, you can allow that to go forward and still get some sort of <clears throat> Inclusivity somewhere else, but it would still per, you would, you would be able to horse trade is essentially yeah, and, what and, you said. And what we said was, you know, we're not going to take your your word. You know, you've got to share your financial performer with us. You know, prove that it's not feasible and have discussions and yeah. uh, and that's what we did. You know, on, I, there are a number of developments where we had those painful conversations. <laughs> You know, when those, you're always going to have the developer, you know, try to, if the threshold is, uh, you know, 15 units, you need yeah. two, well, you know, they're going to want to stay at 14, unless they can get yeah. 17, yeah. You, you know. <clears throat> but if you give them an incentive to provide that 15th unit, you know, it might be, you know, what, what are the pain points for developers? It's always parking. Frequently, you know, one of the yeah. them is parking. It really limits units. If you, if you give them a break on parking, <clears throat> they provided more units, you got some relief on parking, you know. Yeah, and those... It's a, it's a those are, way to, to maybe you, generate... Yeah. Well, the thing is, the CBD already has really minimal parking. It's like 0.75 per unit. But in, you know, as you move up, we're talking about North Maine. Yeah, yeah, moving. You know, yeah, but, I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. There's, no, and one of the things, about. Uh, those incentives are in, are not included in this in the inclusionary zoning language per se. Uh, as Dia just said, they are included in the in the broader zoning language for the CBD because. Well, in, in anything dealing with affordable units or inclusionary, you've got to be legally careful that it's not interpreted as a taking, hmm. because then that makes it illegal, and you're then subject for compensation. Uh, and so, the, again, Edith Netter was very good at craft, <coughs> making sure that, that what we crafted for the CBD was legal <coughs> in terms of providing some incentives for, for the affordable units. I mean, I think it's worth thinking about in our longer term planning is how we would start thinking about inclusive requirements across town and what we would give as incentives where we might relax or things like that. So, I mean, that's a, it's a bigger topic. I know that yeah. one of the things the Housing Partnership Board wanted to do was to have this more global discussion of inclusivity, which I think is we need to do. Um, so, do we need to, do you just need to have a feel of the board to go ahead, Taylor? Uh, you probably should authorize me okay. to make, the, make a decision by the end of the week. If possible, yeah, obviously. So, before you do that, so I, I have a question because a lot of this obviously took place before I was on the board, although I was following it. Currently, you described what we have in town for inclusionary housing. Greater than six units, 10% rounding up at 80% AMI. Mm -hmm. Greater than 25 units, an extra 5% at 120% AMI mm -hmm. rounding up. Yep. So what we would be asking, I, I hope the first question would be, although maybe you already have this answer and I don't know, could we support that? Is that, do we already know that that's not supportable? We know that is supportable. We know it is supportable, exactly that. As far as in, in oh, I'm VA. sorry. The, so the six, the six and above. No, we don't no. know that. But we the, do know the twenty-five 
and above. And we actually know that 15 and above at 80% is, is okay. I think we know 10 and above is okay. I don't, we can do 10 and above at, at 80% right. for 10%. Right. But we don't, yeah, we can do 10 and above because it's. I think three is written as 10 and above. Yeah, we can do 10 and above. But it was yeah. rounding down. Was it not? Yeah, but. I don't know if we specified rounding. Well, three. the key thing is when you get to 15 is when it would flip, right? So rounding up gets you nowhere. Well, you get 11. You would get 11. So we know, I believe, the, the EFA said it, the lowest numbers I believe it ran was at 15 units. Okay. So we're good up to 15 units. We can do 10% rounding down, so that would give us um, from 10 units to 15 units, that gets us one unit, regardless of which way you and round. that is how it, the rounding is done. I thought, so this is where I get confused. Oh, sure. I thought That's any partial up. unit, so if you have 0.01 of a unit, it rounds up to a whole unit. No, yeah. no, it's, no. No, it's... Between continue, continue your thought, Dion, because I think that'll, you'll answer. Yeah, so I'm, I'm incorrect. So from 10 units to 15 units, if you're rounding down, you get zero units. If you're rounding up, you get one unit. From, because 10 percent, you know, it's, it's less than a half, so you round down. All right, so currently, in the way the 3A is, is, was passed, between 10 units and 15 units, you don't get an extra unit because you're rounding down. When you go above 15, you're rounding up, so you get the extra unit. You get two units. If you're rounding, not if you're rounding, if you're rounding up, not if you're rounding down. So currently, we're rounding down in our ZBA. The EFA, I'm pretty sure, says that we can round up from 15 units higher. So we're good for rounding up from 15 units. We have the backing, we have the analysis for that. I sure hope I got that right. I think, we need, I think we need to have that conversation with the- Yeah, the so, so the question is, can we round, we can go below 15 units, can we round up? So which would mean that you would add one unit between 10 and 15. Um, okay. And then, so we just have to look at what's, what, yeah. So let's make sure the parameters, I can, I'm more than happy to sit down with you and write up the parameters. Um, I will review the EFA to make sure that my, now, my memory of it is correct. But I, 15 unit, I know they did, went down to 15 yeah, no, units. It's, it's, but yeah. I mean, it, there's a difference between the state example and the state guidelines. Hey, Taylor, one of the things I can coordinate with you on, uh, the person that I've been talking with well, let me ask a question first. What is the status of Emily Innes? Is her work done? Is she still available? Emily's work is, has been completed. Excuse me? Emily's work has been completed. Okay. Yeah. I, mean, uh, I mean, the person, because she had access into housing and livable communities. Uh, so the thing, the person I've been talking to mostly about this is Katie Lacey, who is with the Mass Housing Partnership. But we've never gotten anything in writing from anyone indicating that if we were to round down without an analysis, okay. would, that's the key, is that no one, they may be silent, but that's part of the problem. So it, it makes sense in my mind to just do the analysis, see how far no, down I we can I, go. I think what I'm saying is do both. And I think it would be worthwhile coordinating with Katie, because uh, she's been fairly clear and open with me. I've known her for several years, uh, we've got a good relationship. Uh, I can't, they're having a, uh, a two-day uh, housing training session institute out in Worcester Wednesday and Thursday. Um, my guess is that Friday will be a recovery day for her, but. Uh, well, I'll be there on Thursday, so maybe I'll. You're going to Worcester? Yeah. Okay. So maybe I'll see her. Yeah, I mean, she'll be there. I think. It would be interesting to know, you know, whether this whether the state has approved any inclusionary housing. Yeah, I mean, what things? What, what Katie told me was that what they've been looking at is the the kind of upper limit uh, in there, and not really the the lower limit. 
And so what she said is to be conservative, you need to look at the lower limit uh, because then, you know, I mean, so she, the last conversation I had with her, she said, I don't know any example, any community where the state has actually paid any attention to the lower limit. Uh, but to be conservative, to, you know, to dot every single I, cross every single T, yeah, you would be safe to look at that and, and draw, you know, make sure that the EFA supports that. So, so I think our most productive thing is to authorize Taylor to ask for. Yes. To yeah, can I just follow feasible. up once more? So this is where I got really lost. In our 3A article, affordable housing, 3C says, if the number of affordable units calculated contains a decimal, the number of units shall be rounded down. Yep. So if that changes to rounding, if you oh. simply change the word to rounding up, then a fractional number of units, then 1.1 affordable units becomes two. Yep. I so it would if, if we read that strictly, um, the number of affordable units calculated as a decimal, the number of it, units it, shall it, be it, rounded it, up. It, the rounding is the opposite, changes at, at 0.5. So what you wouldn't round. No, sorry. But not according to what we wrote in, uh, we would have to change. This would, we, it wouldn't be just changing this from rounding down to rounding up. It would be indicating that, yeah. You, you have would, to get above 0.5 to before you round up. Yeah, what are not you, saying what that you, any portion you, of a unit would be a full unit. So a, a tenth would be a full but unit. But right now, if we just changed the wording on this to rounding up, mm -hmm. that would mean that. That's why I, that's why I was getting lost. If okay, what, are you, what are you reading from? I think you're saying. From our um, 3A article. Um, OK. So currently, if we have six units in the CBD, you have to put in a affordable unit and 10% of six is in, this, in a CBD. In a CBD, you're, yeah. You're so, so the key is that th it's not a question of rounding, actually. It's a, it's a question of truncation. Yeah. And, and, and I, the language using decimals is anathema to me because every number has a decimal it's just sometimes it's zero i so, like brian's yeah. reading though where like if you have an affordable closet you have an affordable unit <laughs> <laughs> so the key is that the 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 way it's written it's a truncation what we would say is that if you get above a half you round up okay so we just have to be clear we couldn't just change the t phrasing say round, round to the nearest the, integer the, the, yeah, the result of the efa will will cause several minor changes throughout that section of three okay. it's not just a, it's not just a few things I, I i i wouldn't be surprised if there are many sections you know words numbers that would that 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 will have to change okay yeah. Yeah. No, i think if you look at the I don't have this memorized. If you look at the zoning, inclusionary zoning for the CBD, uh, the rounding is defined in that, and, I, and that's it's it's yeah. If it's if it's a half, it goes one yeah, it's way. It's a half or above. I think it, it goes, literally says like we point just, five. Yeah, so it's I mean, a half or below. You round down. To be precise, we should just say round to the nearest integer. Yeah, which is mathematically yeah, but, but, precise. And we dealt with it in the CBD, and it hasn't been a problem. Okay. Thank. Thank you for thank yeah, you for my confusion yeah. of Brian. Math. You you raise very good points, and uh, we should make sure that they all are consistent. So um, I would move that we authorize Taylor to proceed with a PO with who are they? What is our consultant? Well, we would have to find out if they're even available. So I yes. would say with with a consultant with a consultant to. Uh, to implement, to um, complete a feasibility, economic feasibility sorry? analysis. Complete an economic feasibility analysis. Yeah, analysis. yeah, to undertake an economic feasibility analysis to see whether we can um, apply the existing center business district and GBD 2 and 3 inclusivity requirements below 15 units to the 3 AG. It's quite a motion. Hey, when you're moving, you're moving. <laughs> you can't repeat it. Is there a it. second? I can't repeat like it, but our, our it. recruiting secretary, of course, has it done perfectly. <laughs> Lucky to have a pro on hand. We're on Is tape. Is there a second? We're on tape. Right.
second? So I'll second it for discussion. Okay. Okay. And so is there discussion? Yeah. That, so that would just be asking if we can do our current, but we also want to know if we can't do that, what in between what we have in our 3A and what we currently do. Yeah. So we, yeah, you're right. We actually want to have titrate it scan it. down and yeah. see at what point it becomes economically feasible. So would you like to amend the motion? Oh, God. You can do this. I move to amend the motion that we further ask to determine the lowest number of units um, which would be economically feasible. Yeah, that, that low cutoff. At that, well, at that cutoff, yeah. yeah. Is there a second to the amended motion? I second it. Is there further discussion on the topic? Do we need a, to authorize the money to, or is that doing that? I thought we were authorizing you to hire a consultant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to have not to exceed amount or anything. I think tucked in there so, somewhere. Is so we're just, so we're just, now we have to vote on the amendment to the motion. Okay, so is there, there's a second to the amendment. All in favor of the amended version, the amendment I, I, passes unanimously. Now we're back to the now we're back to the amended motion. main is there motion. Further discussion on the motion. Uh, I All think in we favor. have. Aye. It passes unanimously. Okay, I think we have a good idea of which way this board wanted to go. In case. Yeah. Okay, great, good. Thanks for coming Taylor, by. Taylor, what's your, what's your schedule on Friday? Um, Just got busy. I mean, uh, <laughs> town hall closes at noon. Um, if you can come in early. Okay, well, I, I probably can't come in. I can, I was gonna coordinate with you by phone, but I'm busy from probably 9.30 to noon. You can give me a call before 9.30. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Thank you for coming by, John. It would be nice to spend the money we have. The, the alternative is that we could talk on Monday. Just give me a call and we'll see what yeah. happens. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. We are nine minutes into our discussion of planning board priorities, although I imagine we sort of touched on some. So you as can blame me for getting, getting you back behind schedule. <laughs> Uh, you know, as is our brand. So appreciate keeping, keeping I think we're true to way the ahead of where I, I told my wife that the four ZBA petitions would take like an hour and a half. And so we are. We are a model of efficiency. Okay. So this is in person so that we can have a goal setting session so that we could sort of discuss as a group what we want to do as a planning board. Um, is that, do, I don't remember from last time we did this do we set goals for the year do we set them until fall town meeting what's our timeline to elections to we, yeah it's it's kind of weird because we have to get the budget in by december ish mm -hmm. and the budget describes our goals for the next year so we presumably we've already talked about our goals four months ago but that's usually, but we have a new board, it's so folks, it's, yeah. this all makes perfect sense in some version of reality. So yeah, it's a good I would say point. our goals through the next, up, up until springtown meeting of next year, a year from now. Great. And we tweak them when we get to the fall and we talk about budgets to see whether, you know, we're still anywhere near reality. Great. Um, I will go in reverse order of membership. What would you like to see the planning board tackle? Well, um, I'm going to write them down as I think of them, although they're still up in there. So one things we have to one things one of the things we have to do is of course our design guidelines for 3A. Yep. Um, I think I would like to see a um, cleanup article for the inclusive requirements for fall. I think it's a pretty simple thing, and I don't think town meeting will be aghast. Um, that just means we would need to have, you know, we shoot for language 
we're past when we, so we, yeah, the other thing is we have to ask Sally for her, Sally came up with this schedule of when we needed to get things through and it was, it was ambitious in the sense it wanted us to get things done earlier, but we really need to. But in any case, I think if we were to get language by beginning of August, it's a pretty simple thing, so I don't think that would be really late um, because uh, the clock really starts ticking down beginning of September, so. And we want to have public hearings and nobody's around in August. So anyway, so that was inclusive housing, inclusive for um, 3A. Sorry, sorry to cut you off, Dia, but I do yes. just have to bring up the, if we're going to be talking about priorities and timing, there is a chance that we do not hear back from the state about our the current status of our three uh, okay. about the acceptance of our three a and if that is the case we, we at that point we should consider if we do want to amend yeah the the, the thing if we haven't even heard back from the state yet so I, yeah I, I just want to put that in our in our minds yeah that's it's a, a good, good point. internal deadline to have though yep. yeah. because we then again we then wouldn't meet again until and It'll probably be approved somewhere between fall and springtown meeting yeah. so anything we can have yeah, yeah. meeting less and <laughs> having an actual article done and ready like yep, absolutely half a year beforehand would be Agreed. so amazing <laughs> be exciting um so then uh, for fall i would love to see north maine um i think um you know holton Slaughton cross maybe for spring, I don't know. I mean, one of the things that um, we, the problem with Springtown meetings is that we have to go up against the budget and there's just an awful lot of mental space that is taken up by that. So I think it would be useful if we could think of making the, the zoning bylaw heavy town meeting be the fall one, <clears throat> just because it's easier on town meeting members. But that's, you know, so Holton Swanton Cross, just to revive that. Um, if I were really to gonna go out on a limb, I have two limbs I'd like to go out on. One of them is, and I don't know if this is a planning board prerogative or purview or something with a P, is um, something looking at using native or transitional species in landscaping. Um, I just heard that in that if everything goes according to um, global warming schedule, our climate will be something like that of South Carolina or Georgia in the next. We just got year. rezoned. I like used to say yeah. that on ConCom all the time. Like, what is native here? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it's that going to change dramatically. Yeah. And so one of the things we have to look at is, you know, part of part of the physical environment is that we worry about in land use is how do we deal with heat islands and all those things. What species are going to be going to thrive? Um, we're looking at a lot of trees which are probably you know certainly a lot of the street trees are near the end of their lives we're going to see some transitioning so those are part of the built environment and i i hate to use the word built but that's part of our our suburban environment i think so i would like to think about how we can start thinking more in terms of that sort of sustainability oh that of course means i forgot of course the master plan if rich were here he would have my hide so the master plan implementation committee is, is something on my list and then, then there's the, um, the third rail of zoning, which is um, considering our single family zones, trying to understand how we increase the amount of affordable housing in town through market forces or through some other mechanism, which spreads the impact across town. Um, so that is, I think, you know, that's a long, that's a huge ask and I understand it's not without controversy, but since I'm no longer the chair, I can see that memory that indicates the town would not be on board with that. <laughs> <laughs> you 
But you know, it's it, you know, we can either wait, we can wait for the for the state to come in and give us you know the um, ADUs, which probably is going to happen fairly soon, or we can wait for the state to come in and do like several other states have done, which is to ban single-family zones. I forget which states. I think California is one of them. I think one of them. Cambridge has a. Cambridge is move, is looking at it. I'm I am familiar with some property in Cambridge where you yeah. can no longer, if you voluntarily remove that single family, you must put two dwelling units, not touching. Not touching. Not touching. <laughs> <laughs> it's, they're not duplexes. They're it's two single family houses. And and affordable. Two five two six. Huh. So anyway, that's Our parking. I, I, that's that's. And, you know, okay. That's my list. That's a great list. That's a great. That's a long list. Okay, I will skip myself. Who would like to go next? I'm not sure. I can add a. Oh, I think that's that's a that's, that's, a, that's good a good list. list. All right. I I think we'd be lucky, and I don't mean I don't mean this in a derogatory way. We'd be lucky if we did. If we get the design guidelines, we do um, inclusionary housing in North Main and start thinking about, again, about Holton, Swanton and Cross, I think we'd be lucky. Yeah. What and we're parsing Holton, Swanton, Cross Holton. from Light Industrial or we're putting them together? We, we renamed it as Holton, Swanton, Cross because it's a mix of things. Well, I'm sorry. It's so long, though. <laughs> but, you know, one of the things is well, that, though. Right. The, the, what we discovered was that the neighbors of those areas yeah, said, we're not light industrial. industrial. We are really, you have to remember, we are residential. We're up next to these things, but hey. No. Um, I'm sorry, excuse me. You said what you found out about the neighbors? Oh, the neighbors want to be, they like the, if we only call the light industrial, uh -huh. then the residential neighbors okay. feel like we're, they're not part of the discussion because so much of that area is really residential. There's a huge interface. Mm -hmm. And so by calling it Holton Swan Cross, we're drawing mm -hmm. attention to the neighborhood. <clears throat> it's, the, you know, it's not just light industrial. So, I mean, it's just that it's mixed in. So, so, yeah. so we're talking about changing the zoning part of... I don't know if we're talking about definitely changing zoning in light industrial. We're just, it's an opportunity area that we've under leveraged. So we need to look at what we have for existing zoning, which isn't always synchronized with what we're using it for. So make sure that that's optimized. We need a lot more feedback from current residents and business owners because we, we cracked that door and there's a lot of light flooding through it. So we need some time to hear feedback about what's working and what's not working. And then some of the streetscape work is gonna start anyway, but that's under leveraged. We don't have, I mean, there's, there's really no end to improvements that we could add over there, but thinking of it as a um, development opportunity too. Yeah. We, are we attracting the businesses we want? Do we have the climate for them to even wanna be here? Do we have the zoning to support them? Do we have the, all the things? We, we have a great, starting point because the um not the mhp what is it? the metropolitan area planning commission mapc we we consult we contracted with them to do a, a existing conditions study and it's a great study it, it so it's it's full of an amazing amount of information um and some some pretty decent first cuts at things that we could change to you know pointing out the importance of the area as a light industrial area which is pretty rare um, things you could do to make it more flexible, things like reducing the amount of parking for some of these areas. You know, it's based on square footage, not on the number of employees. So you have these enormous parking areas for yeah, huge work. So people. reducing the, the, the size of the lots so you could actually bring in more units. So uh, just the whole, mm -hmm. you know, how you deal with the interface to the, uh, to the abutter, to the residential abutters. So we have this, we had to put it on hold because we ran out of resources because we ran out of a town planner. Um, but we, we've got this great, um, yeah. Josh Fiala from MAPC did it for us, and it's 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 really great. I mean, I, yeah, it's just we you kind find... of short circuited when we saw it. We were like, yeah. ah, it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so it's that, awesome. It's a great study. But we started. I mean, the key thing is, is we started this conversation with the residents of that area, which have historically not been part of the decision making process, and I, you know, I think we want to keep them part of it. 
Yeah, they mm -hmm. were excited. They, it was an engaged area. We just needed, we didn't have time. So we need to, we need to really set aside. I mean, hopefully, you know, I mean, we, we, I think all have the goal of getting North Main wrapped up in time for fall. Um, and then we would, would turn to focus on Holton, Swanton Cross, first the renaming of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's HSC. Yeah, HSC. HSC. There we All go. Right. That's cool. Um, I, I can live with that. I want to, I want to, so Brian, I, you said this is a, a long list and it is, but one of the things that historically <clears throat> the board has tried to get to is to have medium, you know, short, medium and long term projects moving forward so there's always something you know so we're not you know we know some of these are going to take multiple years but if you know if we're always in reaction mode we never get them done so i'm really excited that we're going to have a, a much better staff planning department so that these things can be moving forward over several time you know so we can say i mean one of the things we thought was can we actually look forward 18 months and say, what are we going to be doing at town meeting 18 months, 24 months from now? And looking at and seeing which of these, how do we prioritize things to make sure those things move forward? And, you know, it, it, there were always grand ideas and the yeah. bus was always late. Well, that makes a ton of sense. Yeah. I, I was thinking of wrapping up any part of this, li this list oh. over, but certainly dipping your toe in, our toes in, makes tons of sense so that just like we dipped, you dipped your toes into Holton Swanton Cross or HSC um, already, so it's not like starting from zero. That could be the same thing on um, native species and landscaping and street trees, whether that's even under a purview, I don't know. But like dipping our toe into that now so that in a year and a half, we say, well, now is the time to do that. We can go back to the work that's been started. Yeah. But so I agree. It's still a lot. It's also still a lot. Um, the only other thing that I would add to the list and you is that I think we should kind of keep keeping an eye on our communication with ZBA because I do think our recommendations and their I, I, that synchronicity is frustrating to me I think sometimes so that's the only other thing I would put on our long term oh, thought list so um, I had forgotten about this because the last couple of years have been crazy so the planning board tried and was successful for a while to have quarterly or semi-annual meetings with a number of boards. So we would invite them and we would say, hey, let's talk. And you know, we would show up at the select board meeting occasionally. Um, early on, it was a little um, tense, but I think that we've moved beyond that, I hope. But certainly having these open discussions and just you know, having them at our table or, or you know, if they can't make it, we go to their table. And just you know, doing that regularly to keep the lines of communication. It really helped break down some of the concerns and then we sort of stopped doing that for a while. And so I think it would be great to do that again. Yeah, I think North Main's a great opportunity for us to work with sustainability and the select board because to get the full streetscape and to get a thoughtful yeah. sort of set of bylaws in place we're going to have to work and, together and the traffic and you know we, so much of what we want for north main street it requires traffic right and streets so, yeah. if, we get, if we're going to get to the midline of the road we're going to need them um so from a practical standpoint the design guidelines for 3a taylor raised the opportunity to the design review committee to be proactively part of those because they will have less opportunity to weigh in as we go forward um do you want to be the person who reports on how that went or do you want me to right now yeah yeah sure so the we we met with the drc last week uh the design review committee and we asked them if they would be interested in taking all the work that we've done for 3a there's actually quite a bit of design work that we did do and kind of put aside um taking that and fleshing it out to make sure or to to attempt to comply with design guideline regulations um the i think that there's the the purpose of 
I mean, this will be a cooperative process. It's not like they're just going to go off and, 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 and do it, but it gives the, the, the design review committee a, an, an opportunity to get involved with, with, with the process um, while also allowing the planning board to potentially prioritize some, some other stuff uh, that would be you know, a little more pertinent. Um, and, and 3A puts down the, the interesting gauntlet of having to have objective design guidelines. So I took to heart the comment that you made once that it would be nice if developers just like had a handbook, like this is what we want here. And so if design review can help us distill down to what is essential for the feel of Winchester, that would be amazing. And that really is what it is, what a lot of the work is. It's, it's taking what we have and distilling it down. We're not building something up that's new. We're taking existing rules and uh, and new n existing design rules and newly proposed some already newly proposed design rules and kind of tailoring it down to what okay. complies with three A. You're making it something that is open is kind of could be open to subjective interpretation and saying this is for three A we have to three <coughs> yeah, A we yeah, have to this is yeah, this, this is Winchester make it look like Winchester these are the windows. Right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Right. Not, not just the they. And we and, and 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 we want design <coughs> to help us with. That. Yeah. Are we are we pulling in um, form and place on that? Um, I mean, yeah, yes, yes, and no. A lot of the work that is in their packet of uh, uh, of what to distill uh, comes from form and place. A, mm -hmm. a lot of it. Uh, but there, it's we aren't planning regular meetings with in yeah. place for that process. I would, you know, so my my the reason I brought that up is that I found Michael's ability to create really clear guidelines was really useful, especially because he comes at it from that sort of a developer slash architects. So if you remember, we attempted to put in Michael's guidelines as our design <coughs> guidelines, and they were, it was, this, many different people said that that would likely not pass. Okay. So we would give Michael's work and the CBD guidelines to design review and say what's essential here, and then we would vote on it and hope the state passes. Right, so I, I was thinking that well, we, would, be we, would take, <coughs> we would take what design review <coughs> says are, you know, they create the base work and then Michael puts it in the language. Helpful context is that I don't think they, they, they were more reticent to take this on when it felt like a Genesis project than they were when it felt like an editing project because it's a ton of work to create design guidelines. Oh, no, no, I guess I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being clear. Whatever DOC comes up with as the foundation, right. giving it to Michael, to put the polish on it so that it is in the language. I think it's language. the other way, though. I think it's whatever Michael f helps us design for the vision for North Main as an extension of the CBD and as a feel for Winchester design guideline will say. And the objective pieces of that. You're saying that they uh, want to do. I'm saying we're going to have more creative. Pro we're going to have more interaction with properties that are being developed in the North Main district than we will with the mod. And so we want Michael's participation in creating the design guidelines for North Main. Yes. But when we sort of decide which of those can we distill down to objective guidelines that 3A has to hold on to, we want design review to make sure we don't edit, we don't leave anything on the editing floor that is essential and we don't miss anything. And I agree. Yeah. All I'm I, saying, we're saying the same thing, we're just on opposite sides. No, no, actually I'm just saying, uh, I'm taking a, a third step, which is that we just make sure that it gets past Michael, that whatever comes out from the DRC, regardless yeah. of the source, is that it goes through Michael so that it actually... Yes, okay, sure. It's just that he's really good at writing language, which I think... Oh, I see. You want him to write the 3A language. And I, once, once the final thing is set up, <clears throat> you know, one of the issues with our current language in the CBD is it's not always clear what it means. Right. And so you can approach it from a design standpoint and say, I want it to look, and you have a really cl clear idea in your head, but that's not what it looks like on paper. And I just want to have the last pass go through Michael so he can make sure that what actually shows up is something that is a person in the, in, in the business will understand and be able to. Right. That's all. It's just, right. Right. just. I'm with you. 
And this last pass is us voting on it, and we do have someone who knows development on our board, so yeah, that would be yeah, helpful yeah. too. <laughs> you know, some of what I read in this. Which one is that? Um, North, North Main, Main Street. Street zoning framework. Mm -hmm. You know, the specialty pavement. And it's a work in progress. It connects. <laughs> it's the stuff that makes you nervous. You, you know? Right. It's the constant, you know, there's this evolution of using new words to describe the same thing, you know, specialty pavement. Are we talking pavers, Belgian walks, <laughs> you know? Right, but in North Maine, we have the opportunity to sort of have that back and forth. What's feasible right. for you that looks right for us, and then we'll have to distill right. it. But when you, right. It's just, you need sort of an example of, yeah. I mean. And we can. <coughs> it, yeah. It's a, <coughs> what is that, you know, just. Yeah. yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, that's it's a new word I haven't heard for what I suspect is granite block or a paver, you know, not asphalt. I think they're saying they don't right. see black asphalt. No, it's not. Right. I got that. Right. So maybe we change it to not asphalt. That's a specialty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, but you know, but there are specialty asphalts, sort of. There you are. Know, the you know, the pervious ones and controversial, but. So distilling from north main street to the 3a guidelines actually could make it longer though because we have to be very objective as opposed to we can't we you can say um specialty pavers on north main street and exactly. move on exactly where, so we, we could end up like it, it might not be funneling down this way it might actually be going that way as well, we go that direction as long as it ends up being specific and objective then yeah we're somewhere. <clears throat> I never had a paving contractor who didn't insist. He did a special job. <laughs> I know. I, knew, I know. <clears throat> Did they all do that, though, is the real question. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll let you ignore that. Never mind. It's a fair point. And we are allowed to include photo. I mean, we're allowed yeah. to really build the position <clears throat> out. And I think that's a, good, a, that's a good opportunity. Yeah, there's a language that's pretty well understood. You know, they're different. People use different words to describe. We'll have a glossary you know, and definitions. I, mean, I think that's an important I've thing. Heard, you know, designers, architects, they love to use, you know, we'd all look at the same thing. I heard someone, you know, that it was, it was, we we're looking at a dark purple color. She said, she said, aubergine. <laughs> I haven't heard that in years. My mother was an artist. I haven't heard that in 50 years. This seems to be the new you know, <coughs> color. Re, Aubergine, re Parmesan. Aubergine. Aubergine, dark plum, wild berry. We all look at it and say, yeah, it's a dark purple. Purple. <laughs> this is so, why we need design review. So there's, a, there's an old movie which has some problematic parts because it is of its era. It's Mr. Blinding's Bill's his Dream House. And there was this hilarious scene where the um, Mrs. Blandings, I guess, I don't recall him. She is describing the colors she wants in her kitchen. Was Jimmy Stewart? It was Jimmy Stewart and... Uh, <coughs> oh, shit. <coughs> Why can't I think of her name? Anyway, it was sort of like, I want, a, I want a white, a warm white, not to be considered anything else but white. And the painter says, white. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So in the sort of reality that we get, need to get a lot of this done over the summer, we were thinking that it might be helpful rather than trying to convene often enough to do all of this work and generate this work as an entire group that we sort of assign point people or team smaller teams to work on each piece of North Main so that we have sort of focal areas that we're able to sort of digest some information and bring it to the group to, for discussion rather than sort of what page, where is this? Um, Nick had offered to liaison to um, design review for design guidelines, so that seems like a good fit. They were excited to have him. Um, if we were to sort of categorize some of the other main issues that we'll need to tackle to get North Main right, um, affordability is one of the top, that's sort of more of an opportunity area than, than 3A might be. It's somewhere we can think creatively and we can install incentives. Um, so that's one area that we may want to have a, a sort of focal person for. I think use tables, dimension tables, and streetscape are probably other areas, but I am in interested to hear what I'm overlooking or what else we're missing here. 
um, and who would be interested in sort of putting together which sections of that. Um, obviously, Michael Wang will be leading quite a bit of this, but it, we have so much to look over from what he's already done, and we'll have so much <coughs> that we need to put into each of these different areas that we want to make sure we're sort of doing some work outside of the meetings to get ready for it. And I don't want everyone working on everything. It's just inefficient. So I would like to suggest that John and I work on some of the affordable housing incentives with your knowledge of the business, trying to come up with something that makes economic feasible, you know, sense. That's great. So if you're okay with that. Um, I think we'd be good on use tables. I like numbers. How the people move around. We like people. <laughs> I think that um, use tables and then streetscape. I'm on permanent street committee. Street tree committee. Anyway, <laughs> it's easy for me. I've been in contact with Michelle Pryor for a few things, so it's easy for me to keep an ear on the select board. So, what do we do about sidewalks and? Thanks for coming, John. Thanks, nice John. to see you. <clears throat> I mean, those are parts that we don't have control over, but are important. So, well, I know. Can, you, know, you can. You can take control over the sidewalks if you want. Can we? I thought that was all select board. I thought that I was. I think it's going to take some coordination, but. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not suggesting anything, but you know, <laughs> there's, there's 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 no reason to. And I've permanent street trees have heard me say this a whole bunch of times, but. There's no reason that we can't introduce some sort of fund that is funded through development that goes straight to okay. the improvement of, of, of sidewalks. It's, it, it, it's not, we might, the planning board may never be the ultimate authority over the streets and the sidewalks, but through redevelopment, they certainly can create the future outlook of what they look like and how they're used. So that's excellent. So we need, I think we need, we need partners on that. I imagine it's select board and town manager, and I don't know who else does traffic. Yeah, street tree people. Street tree people, yeah. Con con for a tiny bit. I mean, some of these yeah. properties are so close to the waterfront. But water I, front. the money, the real money is going to come in. I mean, it's the money that we're looking for. I mean, just looking at how much it's going to cost to redo the downtown, which is just insane amounts of dough. Um, you familiar with the project in Lexington, the sidewalks? I No, I know they have brick sidewalks. Mass Ave. Right. They, they I mean, do. I don't know what, the, I've seen them. I've, they, I've seen the results. I don't know what the, I, were they? I've been there as a copier I use. I mean, they dug down. Uh, they're, what are they called? Six, Something eight, trenches. Eight, eight, like they're. Yeah, you, you know that we're doing that. We have a proposal for the same project. Yeah, it's, it's. Uh, yeah, I mean, in like a hundred years. You, you know, it's. <laughs> um, the bricks. Um, you know, for some people, for <clears throat> older people, very difficult to walk on. And, right. uh, the trees, you know, right. you know, moving the bricks, the shape of the edges, the edge shape. And I mean, I think it was an effort to. Uh, they are it is wonderful to walk on. I've <laughs> I walk on them now. Very I nice. mean, we've got North Main Street's long enough that we could consider different sort of streetscapes. <laughs> So maybe closer to town center, we have a little more have traditional. But then, as you know, as we move up north, we change. I think in town center. You... And part of the reason we did the smaller subdistricts is so that we can say here this would work and there that would work, and we want a yeah. cohesive streetscape, but we want to allow for people to move appropriately to what their yeah. goal is there. So. Um, the, I added sustainability to this list, but Ken Pruitt is so efficient. I don't think we need a committee. I think we just need to not forget to ping him. <laughs> he, okay. will, he just sort of gives you back a bulleted list in under 10 minutes. So, so do we have a deadline for, um, is there a schedule for the three away work? Or not the three away work. Is there a schedule for the um, North Main Street work that we're aiming at? For the community engagement, yes, there is a schedule. Yes. Yes, there is there is a schedule. Yeah, I just and it ends in September before the warrant articles were due. Okay, because I think um, I would it would be helpful to know <coughs> when each of these little bits have to get fed back to the mothership. Right, I agree with that, and that's probably partly 
I'm not saying we're not going to have any North Main special meetings, just as a heads up. <laughs> I'm saying we're going to try, because we are already organized into petitions the first meeting of the month, and so we can really dive in the second meeting. So I'm hoping to minimize it, especially over the summer. But on the other, I say that like fall is easier for everyone. It's not, it's just not. On fun. the other hand, since we are so efficient with the ZBA matters this evening, maybe we can add some of the meatier topics to the first meeting of the month. I mean, obviously I'm not like hoping to add extra meat, you know, so whatever we can do is, would be great. Um, the time, so we, maybe we should all pull our calendars out and make sure we can sort out the meetings because we left it hanging whether we would meet the second and fourth or every other. So I want to at least plan out until it either finds a rhythm or we make some decisions. Um, so we are here the today. So either way, second and fourth or every other would put us on the 25th, the 8th, and the 22nd. That would put us through July. Is there, do, eighth, does anyone eighth, anticipate? The ninth, the ninth. Sorry, the 9th. I did the exact same thing when we talked this over. I looked at the Mondays, not the Tuesdays. Box right, the so we would be looking at the 11, the 25th for our next meeting and then July 9th and 23rd in July. There is a proposed, I'm going to get this wrong, joint meeting with the select board for, is it Monday the 29th or the 30th? Monday the 29th. Yep, Monday the 29th at 6. And what's the? Monday the 29th of July. Yes. Yeah, I can make that. Okay. How, housing production plan okay. uh, presentation from our consultants to the planning board and the select board. Okay. So that is actually, uh, I don't want to get off the, so let's just circle back to the housing production plan. Um, so, so far through July, will we probably have quorum for those meetings? Does I anyone know not, that out of town? I will not be around from the 4th to the 14th, so I will miss the meeting on the 9th. Okay. It's not impossible. I could call in. Um, uh, uh, it just depends. I'm actually moving from one. We're going out to Oregon. We're going to, moving from one Airbnb to another one that day. So I just don't know if I'll have, like, what the timing is. If I can, I will. And if I can't, I won't. Great. Uh, I, if we did the, I'm just throwing this out there. I'm not saying we should do this. If it was the second a first and third or whatever, I could make the second because I'm leaving the fourth to the, but that that's the fourth week. So I assume other people have gone then too. Yeah, I don't have a problem with any of those dates as far as I know. The only question is if it's on the second, will anyone be taking that week off because the fourth? You're taking the week of the second off because of the fourth. I was trying to dodge the fourth. No, he, you were proposing that. Well, are you or are you proposing that? My question is, well, I mean, you had brought up the second you could make, and I was wondering if that was going to interfere with other people's vacation plans. So, I am in town on the second, so I could make the second. Are you in town on the second? I'm in town on the second. I'm not, in t I'm not available the week of the 21st. So... I would have to. I wouldn't be able to be at that meeting on the week of the twenty-first, but I can set it up so that. So how do we look if we try for this the July second and July sixteenth? It's okay with me. It works for me. Okay. okay, so we would be meeting two weeks in a row. Then we'd be meeting I know. the twenty. We have two weeks in a row. That's. But we could it's not we could horrible. move some. Okay, so. I don't have a problem with that. We got a nice June break. We kind of got through some, we got a three week break post town meeting. Um, July 2nd and then July 16th. Is that what we just said? And, 2nd and 16th. And so okay. would we be skipping the 30th because it's still in July or would we think that the it's 30th, really- The 30th, we have a joint meeting on the 29th. Okay. So that would be- be a lot. It would also be TBD because we may be starting to pile up information from everybody. But um, so if we go, okay, so we're doing second. And, and just keep in mind, there there are. Cheryl, there, do those dates work for you? Okay. There are ZRAC meetings and public hearings and right. all that other stuff mixed in here. No, we don't, not all, those aren't planning board meetings, so not everyone has to go, but. They are it is infinite. always encouraged that planning board members do do attend, um, uh, and those will be kind of those aren't set in concrete, but they will be sporadically as well. 
Okay, so in the hopes that not having a meeting the week of not having a meeting on the 30th improves our participation in the 29th joint meeting. So does that mean we're okay? So then in August, that would give us the 13th and the 27th. Does the 13th and I couldn't. I, Remarkably, that like threads the needles for me in an amazing way somehow. Of I am not sure if I'm going to make if I can make those two particular okay. Tuesdays. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure about the second week of August. Yeah, maybe we hold off on August. Let's hold off on. We also don't I, have Nick. I, will know I know Nick's gone for soon. a couple of weeks right after Nick's. Not sure about August. I'll know in a, a couple of weeks, but okay. I'm gone a couple of weeks in August. I also feel like August is a. I don't know when my kids. World. So my kids moving into college either the sixteenth, the twenty first, or the nineteenth, and I don't yet know. So. Okay. So we will TBD August for now. So I think that it's best. It's it's sort of working to not have a plan right now. <clears throat> not ideal, but it is working. So I know we're you still meeting on the twenty fifth of June. So we had, we're definitely meeting on the twenty fifth of June. That is our next meeting. So for the 25th of June, so now, so now that we sort of know when we're meeting, um, let's, so yeah. when. What, oh, sorry, you, you, you. The 25th of June would be the last time we could have Griffin show up at a planning board meeting. Oh. He might not want to. I don't think he's. Taylor's suggesting that a tea time at a golf. Yeah, the, I, I guess I could sacrifice my, my, my ambivalence towards golf for Griffin. <laughs> oh, God, would he want to golf at the planning board? That would be hilarious. I have learned and not executed golf skills. You guys want to go? I, mean, I can't go. hit the ball. It could sit there. It could, I could swing I'm, 10 times and not hit it. Maybe, maybe it's more of a mini golf crowd. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> I am I'm more than nervous. happy to wait at the clubhouse for the... I'll drive the cart. How about that? You, know, you could try... Oh, is no, there like a bar we, at the we have to take turns it, driving the car. Maybe he was picturing a gift certificate. I don't know. <laughs> 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 All right, the Griffin plan is TBD, but um, we, he probably will not be best honored by attending a late night meeting. Um, it, it, is his future in the planning world? Um, he would like his future to be in. in then he's got to get used to these late night meetings. <laughs> Can I ask a question about the second of July? Will we have all of the ZBA? They're all due now on the first to them, so we'll actually have them. So, uh, kind of a little, not a little out of our control. Um, hopefully, okay. But it's um, that's their goal. It's, it's yep. But you said what date do they meet on? So they'll meet on. They meet on June twenty. Yeah, so we'll meet the 16th before they... No, I meant uh, July, though. July. July. Yeah, right. in July, I don't know when, when, oh, the, Ju when the July is. I, I get the ZBA permits when they're sent to me. Okay. I don't know what, exactly what date they're going to be, but... Okay. I guess if we don't do them on the 2nd, we do them on the 16th. I mean... And like, hopefully ZBA meets after that. They, they must have at least two weeks of getting, like... I don't know. I think, I think their meeting's on the 24th or 25th, but okay. I can't say for sure. Okay. Perfect. Good question. Okay, so in time for the June 25th, when is the next time we will see Michael Wang or hear from uh, him? We can any time after July, July 1. Okay, so why don't we use the June 25th meeting to digest what we can <coughs> in relevant areas? I have use table information for you, my friend. I've seen none. Well, except for your meetings, I've seen none <laughs> of it. Sally Dale is a wizard, and we have a lot to go through. Um, so we <clears throat> could commit, you know, some time. Like if, if uh, everyone can sort of dive into their area, and we can do a sort of round-robin presentation on where we think we are with each section and where we think sure. we want to prioritize first. We can try to get, I would actually suggest trying to get Michael to come in for 30 minutes on July 2nd. Yeah. I mean, okay. I don't think just to kind of re, just introduce, uh, you You guys haven't met yeah. him yet, so just an introduction and kind of a re-kickoff. Carrie and I have already kicked off with him, but you were yeah. there, right? Yeah. But, um, um, yes. 
just just come in for a, a he's few excited minutes. to meet with people we were trying to buffer him from meetings with people and he was so he's a he wants person. to get in there i've not met him he's delightful he's, a, he's, yeah, a he's lovely um, um so john shall we set up a meeting offline to about this and maybe drag john Serbeer in there because he's got a lot of background knowledge on the inclusive housing things i'm going to put on your radar that dimensional requirements would also be suitable for dimension to dement dement <laughs> demented <nine>. dimensions <laughs> but dimension tables are another piece of the design guidelines that i think would be well suited to your expertise and may factor into affordability sort of strategies so i'm just putting it on your radar okay that was something i had bulleted that i was like i am not the person for that okay good so we'll find a time anytime and what else? What have we not gotten to? Uh, so, so going back to only because I just can't. I'm trying to wrap my head around it. So we're going to start working on North Main with right. the idea that the design guidelines for 3A will flow down some way. Either so remember, 3A is an overlay district <coughs> yes. for a couple of areas, exactly. and so. Design guidelines for 3A, essentially the, pro the way the mechanics of the process will go is that we are going to distill the work we've already done on North Main, yeah. and we're going to sort of give it to design review and have them hash out what they think are essential elements. Okay. And then they'll send it back to us, and we'll send it to Michael, and they'll send it back to you know, we're, Nick. we're thinking of those design guidelines, those more specific guidelines. They're going to be the same. We're not going to have specific for most like all of we want it to be cohesive part. but cbd right. is famously problematic so we want it more clear for north main and we want it very <clears throat> concrete for 3a right just we don't need to have a specific style for right. like do the right. job we're not do the work to do, twice like downtown lexington's <laughs> yeah. a good point you stand there and you're like this is very cohesive like it's over a line so we don't want it to be uniform yeah, but we want it to be winchester when you enter winchester you should know you're in winchester winchester you know of the very attractive, cute downtowns inside 128, Winchester wins the wins the prize. Lexington does not have a downtown. Lexington has a four-lane road. Yeah, they have yeah. a downtown like BU has a campus. Yeah, yeah. we want yeah. a four-lane road that you use to get someplace. You put a lot of stuff around it. Yeah. yeah, but we shouldn't cram it all into down. We should extend that. Our yeah. our we should have more I mean, Winchester that's attractive. I mean, we don't have a body of water either, the same way. Oh, yeah, we have tons of, we have a lot of water. Yeah. You know, we got too much water. <laughs> Sometimes, yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, one of, the, one, of, one of the things we were looking at in North Maine was try to maintain some of that sort of eclectic, esoteric nature of it so that it would be, you know, a fun thing to discover something new around the bend. You know, there are lines of sight that could help mm -hmm. mix things up. We don't have to all look like the same thing as downtown. Um, anyway, are we going to end early again? Oh, no, we're not. We're already over. By 9.30. Well, we've got six minutes. Are we, is 9.30 our magic time? 9.30 is our official end time, but I'm not, I'm not <clears throat> Oh, there it is. Well, it says 8.30. It didn't actually say. Oh, there it is. Oh, on the second. I don't read on the next page. That's, that's oh, that was the work. last thing to say, is that the housing production plan will be something else that we'll need to commit yeah. some significant time to and that will go back to your holistic assessment of the town and where we can put opportunities for affordable housing across mm -hmm. town instead of do, do we do we have a feel for i mean I, I have to admit i've been a little bit out of the loop do we have a feel for how the housing production plan is moving forward do you think it's on schedule uh, i don't know yes. what schedule is yes okay. it is on schedule it should be completed by the end of the year okay so it's a six months from now. We should have it all wrapped up. Okay. That's driven by the select board. You, I think you is that primarily. I don't. It's we both have to sign off on it. Okay. Yeah. And most of the work always ends up going to the planning department. What is speaking uh, of housing and plans? Um, the corner of uh, Swan, Swan and Washington. And Washington. <laughs> yep. Um, so how how bad? No, no, no details to share. <clears throat> how bad is the cleanup? Um, we we don't have we we don't have. I heard I heard someone talking. It might have been a, it's a town meeting. 
about from one of our meetings a couple hundred thousand dollars. I, this is a recorded meeting that is broadcast on WinCam, and I think we should stick to facts that we can definitely defend and quantify. And it's a, it's a, I, I walk by every day. It, we, I know. I it walk is down the, the street, I and I wonder, you know. Yep. I mean, one of the things that we can think of is, again, when we were looking at the 3A districts, we looked at a couple of parcels that the town might be interested in, maybe going into a partnership with the current owners, seeing what's available. So, I mean, that's another thing to look at. I think there's, I think there's, and how we, there are opportunities in town that we can. How we leverage our affordable housing trust, which, I mean, we should have a meeting with them to yep. figure out what they're. So. Yeah, I didn't want to glaze over that, though. That the housing production plan will be the impetus yeah, for us to yeah. take a really holistic and detailed view. Yeah. I and we'll want it in place because there are lots of ideas about what's going to happen in the HSC area. And we want to be very clear about our holistic look at the town before that gets going. It's already caught on. I know. I'm trying to make it a thing. You, it's just going to happen. You, <laughs> I got that reference. <laughs> I knew you, you would. <laughs> you moved that HSC right in there so smoothly. I almost didn't know what you were talking about. <laughs> but you are in the know. All right, anything else? Or shall I entertain a motion to adjourn? I so move. Let us adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks for joining us at home. Thanks to WinCam. Thanks to our recording secretary, Cheryl Dennis, town planner, Taylor Herman, and the lovely members of the planning board. We should do this more often. Good night. Hmm? We should meet in person more often. I, I prefer it. Yeah, I was sitting in.